Welcome to JavaScript tutorial number 6, Functions. In this video, we'll be learning about how we can split our code into reusable blocks using functions and parameters. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. So what is a function? Essentially, it is a set of instructions that has a name. We create one by telling JavaScript that we want to create a function, then giving it a name with parentheses on the end. Here we create a function called myFunction. We can then use the code in that function anywhere in the rest of our script by calling its name with parentheses and a semicolon on the end. It's incredibly important to be aware that the code inside the function will not be run by the browser until its name is called. This might look familiar. That's because we've used one already. Earlier, I introduced a very basic function to run code when our buttons were pressed. Here, we can see a function called myFunction that creates an alert pop-up whenever it is run, saying I was run from myFunction. Before we jump into a hands-on example, let's learn a great feature called returning. Often, if code is going to be useful for reuse, it probably performs some calculation on some variables. We can get the result of that calculation and use the return keyword to give the result back to where the function was used or called from. Because the value is returned, it will allow us to use a function similar to how we would a variable. In the example line here, we return the value inside the variable called the result. Here we can see it in action. We get a floating point number, that is, a number with a decimal point, and return it back to where the function is called. So we can create two variables called num and num2, and we use getFloat for each of them. This means the code inside getFloat is run each time, and a float is retrieved from the user and stored in the result. We then return the result back, and the value is then stored inside the num variables. Alright, let's give it a shot. We'll create the function we just saw, getting a decimal number from the user with a prompt pop-up. Let's call it floats.html. All right, so let's come over here and let's open up our hello.html and we'll use this as our template. So we'll save that as, and let's call it floats.html. All right, so now that we've created that, let's change up our script. So get rid of everything in there. Right, so now let's create our function. So actually we'll get rid of our little output bit there. Don't need that for this. Alright, so inside of our script section, let's create a function. So function, it goes green, and we're going to call it get float. That's going to be the name of our function. We're going to put our parentheses on the end. And we open up our curly braces. Now inside of our function, we're going to create a variable called result, and our result is going to equal pass float, pass float, which will turn a string into a floating point number, and then we're going to prompt the user to, in quotes, enter a number all in space, close quotes. All right, so we'll close off that and put our semicolon on the end. So now we've gotten the result from the user, so from the prompt. Let's use the return keyword. That goes green as well. We're going to return the result. Semicolon. All right, so we've created our get float function. Let's try using it. So we'll come down some lines and let's create a variable called uh, bar num uh, equals get float. So we're going to call our get float function and we'll do a var num2 equals get float. And now that we've got our two variables num and num2 let's alert the result out if we add them together. All right, so let's uh, alert, and we're going to pass in num plus num2. All right, so we've written our script. Let's give it a shot. So let's drag it into our web browser. So we called it floats. Enter a number, let's do 4.223. And num2 is 6.54 or something like that. 
Right, if we hit enter, we get 10.763. Cool. So we successfully grabbed two floats from the user using the one function that we created, rather than having to write out that line twice. Cool. Currently, our functions are pretty limited. They can execute code and maybe return a symbol value. We can make our functions much more powerful by using parameters. Parameters are values that are given to a function when it is called. We can give functions as many values as we like. The benefit of passing values into a function with parameters is that we can make the function do something with those values. The full syntax of a function looks like the following. We place these parameters in the parentheses. This tells the function to expect these values to be passed in. We can name the parameters just like we would a variable and use them in a similar way. If we don't give the function the values it is expecting, they will be undefined and may cause errors later on. So let's create an example and get familiar with using parameters. We'll create a function to get the approximate area of a cylinder, taking the radius and height as parameters and returning the area to the place it was called. To save some time, we'll once again use our add.html template to get the values from the user. Let's call it area.html. All right, so let's open up our add.html in our text editor and let's save it as, and we're going to call it area.html. Save that. All right, so we've got my function where we get our num1 and our num2. What we're going to do is we're going to create another function above it. We're going to call it function and we're going to call it get uh, sill area for getting the cylinders area. And we're going to pass in the parameters radius, which is going to be the radius of the base and the height, as they're the two things that we need to know in order to calculate the area of the cylinder. So let's put our curly braces in. All right, so let's just straight from the return, we're going to return 3.14, so pi times the radius squared. So to square the radius, we're just going to times the radius by itself. So radius times radius. times the height. All right, so we're timesing uh, pi r squared times height. Okay, so now we've got our function to get the area of a cylinder. Let's make use of it. So now what we can do is we'll rename our two variables here. So instead of num1 and num2, let's call our top one radius or r for radius and we'll do h for the second one so h for height and we're going to get our two values and instead of just adding them together we're going to set the inner html of our output to get sill area and then we're going to pass in the radius and the height as parameters then we'll plus on the end and add some quotes and we'll use the HTML sup for superscript and we'll superscript our three for uh, volume and then we'll close off our superscript tag and close off our quotes. Cool, so that's our script done. Let's save that and give it a shot. So we're going to get a radius and then a height. Um, actually, let's, let's um, rename these text inputs so that we can see what they correctly are. So we've got a radius and we've also got a height. So we've got a radius and our height and we can get rid of our equals and maybe make it something like uh, calculate cylinder area. So that'll give us a bit more of an indication of what it does. So let's save this and we'll once again drag it into our 
web browser. And now if you punch in a radius, so say it's got a radius of five and a height of eight, we calculate the cylinder area and we output what the total volume of the cylinder is. Awesome. This concludes our look at functions in JavaScript. Next, we'll be looking at using arrays to store multiple values. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.